Hey everybody, my name is Chris. Welcome to my channel. And today's video is all about milky, creamy, and dreamy perfumes. I have had a YouTube channel for over two and a half years and have never done a video on fragrances which contain milky or creamy notes. It's the perfect time of the year for those types of fragrances. And before I get started, I'd love to hear about your favorite milky or creamy fragrances in the comments below. And with that, I'm just going to jump right in. A few of these perfumes you may recognize. Some of these I haven't spoken about in a long time. And a few are going to be new to you guys out there. So I'm going to start off the list with the most obvious one, maybe, by Commodity. And this is Commodity Milk, and this is the expressive form. I would describe this perfume as a sweet, milky, musky fragrance with a prominent tonka, prominent marshmallow, and wood in the base. This is for all you gourmand lovers out there because this is very, it's very sweet, it's very creamy, and this, the cream in here, the milkiness, almost smells like a marshmallow milk. I think this perfume could be for gourmand lovers and people who don't really want to smell like food and that it doesn't exactly smell like something edible because it has prominent notes of musk and it's got a nice woody base which keeps it out of that 100 foodie edible fragrance so i do see this being somewhat universally appealing in that if you don't like sweet fragrances and you don't like things overly gourmand this one could be a great one because of that nice musky note and the warm wood in the dry down delicious creamy dreamy milky fragrance that i love to wear in the these colder months the next perfume i'm going to talk about and i don't think i've ever mentioned this on any of my videos i have several in this line this is by chabot and this one is Le Concentrate. This is hands down. If you like a buttery vanilla, if you like fragrances with a delicious butteriness to them, this is absolutely spectacular. This one is half buttery goodness and half milky goodness. So the notes I believe are milk, coconut, and cream, but I absolutely get a healthy slab of butter like warm toasting butter as if you had a croissant with a nice buttery flaky top and you served it right next to or maybe you dunked it into a warm glass of milk now i'm not saying that would be delicious to eat but that combo of aromas is what i smell in this perfume the butteriness i get in here it has a little touch of a saltiness to it i've had people ask me if this smells like sweetened condensed milk and i don't think so at all it's not remotely that sweet i get a lot and it's because of the buttery notes i pick up i can't believe this doesn't have butter in it so if you're looking for that perfect milky vanilla with some warm toasty buttery overtones look look no further i will say chabot in general the they are lighter wearing so they're not going to be powerhouses and they make really good layering fragrances i just find these incredibly comforting the next two perfumes i have pulled i have spoken about at some point in the past but of course i had to include them because they have very strong milky overtones the first one is american cream this is like a milkshake, but instead of a strawberry orange milkshake that a lot of people get, I get more of an aromatic milkshake, like a sage thyme, maybe even a little bit of a lavender milkshake. So it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. Maybe in the dry down, I get a little bit of that non-sweet strawberry, but it's definitely milky, it's definitely creamy. I first fell in love with this because I had the air conditioner. So I was thrilled to get the perfume in my hot little hands. So a beautiful, less sweet, milkshakey, creamy fragrance that has some nice aromatic notes, but they're not overly done. So love this one. The next one is so delicious. This always makes my mouth water. It is Italica. This is almond, milk, vanilla, a little bit of saffron, and I mean a little bit of saffron. This is like an almond milk. So, and the almond milk in here is very marzipan-y. It's sweet. And it is the, when I'm in the mood, it is my favorite type of almond. I love that sweet marzipan -y vibe that's in here. It also has some, I want to say toffee, toffee or caramel? No, it's toffee. 
Now I think about it, it's toffee, so it has a toffee note. So I think of a delicious holiday biscotti. It's one of the very few holiday treats that I make every year. Something that, like an almond biscotti with a toffee drizzle, and you've got some sort of delicious coffee coffee drink that has a lot of milk in it. That is what I get from this perfume. And I will say the saffron, which usually overpowers the fragrance, is very subtle in here, and I think it's just perfect. I used to have a lot of problems with the longevity, and now having it for about maybe two years, I don't have an issue, but I do spray my skin and I tend to spray my clothes, so delicious milky perfume. Another perfume that has a beautiful milkiness to it and it is terrific for fall is something I haven't spoken about in a long time. It's called Cafe Cabanel and that reminds me if you want to see me do like a coffee tea video, which I've never done before, let me know in the comments below. But this is a gourmand, this is a floral gourmand and it is a perfume that has a lot of gourmand pull to it but it's still at the same time very perfumey or it has a perfuminess to it, and that is due to, you know, a pretty hefty dose of heliotrope. So it's powdery and floral and perfumey, but it's gorgeously gourmand at the same time. So for me, this perfume opens like a orange cinnamon coffee mocha with you know, a buttery caramel croissant sitting right next to you. It does have a caramelly sweetness, but it's not overly sweet. And it's milky, but not overly milky. It's not super lactonic. So if you're one of those people that milky fragrances go sour on your skin, there's a lot going on in here other than like a milky creaminess. So as long as you like sweet fragrances, this might be right up your alley. This one has a really nice woodiness in the base, probably sandalwood, and the performance is actually quite good on me, but these perfumes I tend to spray both before I get dressed and on top of a nice fluffy sweater, so Cafe Cabana. The next fragrance is one I haven't spoken of in a long, long time, and I stopped wearing it because it was really hard to find, but I think this perfume is a little bit easier to find now it's come back into stock, at least I've seen it back in stock at Lucky Scent where it was sold out for a long, long time. It is called Freckled and Beautiful by A Lab on Fire. So to me, this is very, very interesting and it has a lot of, I'm a big fan of carbs and perfume. So this has a biscuit note, which is oh, just so delicious, but it also has a pretty prominent orange blossom. So the orange blossom comes on really strong in the beginning. So it's like an orange blossom biscuit that you dunk in milk. Now, over time, the orange blossom, that florally aspect fades, and this just becomes more gourmand, but it's more of a starchy gourmand than a super sweet gourmand. It's very biscuity, almost like a scone, so it's not super sweet. It's biscuity, it's starchy, but it still has that wonderful milkiness to it. This is another one that's super addictive, and I love it in the dry down. You need to love something that's very biscuity and you also have to be able to tolerate some orange blossom because particularly in the beginning, they do go hand in hand, but this is just a warm, cozy perfume that I love, freckled and beautiful. Okay, the next one is for all you incense lovers. I just absolutely love this incense perfume and I can't wait to wear my incense heavy fragrances when the weather starts to turn cold. And it is Basilica and these beautiful blue bottles by Milano Fragranzi. This is a gourmand perfume, but the type of gourmand this is is more savory. This is not a sweet perfume at all. So it's an incense, it's a little bit churchy, it's a little bit liturgical, and it has a lot of milkiness to it. But the milkiness is not sweet, it's not overly creamy, or it's bathing these aromatic notes, rosemary, and or thyme. So I do love the aromatic notes and they're not overly prominent because they're just bathing in this delicious milkiness. So it's almost, it is, I've described this before. This is, if you ever have a chewy fragrance, this is almost very chewy to me. The slightest dustiness, the slightest hint of something mildly sweet in the dry down to keep it maybe from being sour. And it has a lovely, maybe a little bit of a cedar note in the base. So a beautiful, not overly smoky incense 
with some milky creamy notes and a lovely smooth aromatic overtone and because of that this is a perfectly unisex fragrance for people who like milky notes a little bit of aromatic notes and some incense so the next perfume i bring to you is by sphinx fragrances and this one i was super excited to get my hands on because it has several notes that i really really enjoy it has rice and it has a milky sweetness. So this is called Porchata de Venise. So one of the things, one of my beefs with this perfume house, and I have maybe four or five bottles, is that the name is not on the fragrance. So I, three other bottles in this collection have a pink or a reddish tone to them. So I don't always know what perfume I am picking up. So my one criticism and my one piece of advice for the fragrance house would be to put the label of or put the name of the fragrance somewhere on the bottle because I have to sit there and pick it up and sniff. Now this one is easy, nothing smells like this one, but a couple other my other fragrances are kind of similar, so it's not super easy for me to tell them apart. But this one is, this is Horchata de Vanille. And this is for all my cinnamon lovers. So if you love cinnamon or a horchata with like a mega dose of cinnamon, this is great. If you don't like cinnamon, you better stay far, far away. This is like, cinnamon on steroids in here, particularly in the beginning. The rice doesn't come out a whole lot. Maybe I get a little bit of that in the dry down and I don't know if I'm smelling that or some sort of woody base, but a sweet, what I get mainly in this is a sweet cinnamony milk, like a really nice cinnamony cereal milk. And I'm, what is that cereal I'm thinking of? Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Like you had Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Imagine combining a horchata with Cinnamon Toast Crunch. So sweet, milky, and cinnamony with a touch of wood in the base. And I would say the longevity would be mild, mild to moderate. So it's, it's not a powerhouse, but I still can smell it after at least, you know, four hours. The next perfume I have talked about a few times but it's been a while and this one is a terrific bang for the buck. In fact, this one was in my Smell Expensive on a Budget and it is Fresh Cream by Philosophy. I know this huge four ounce bottle was well under $100. I wanna say this one is probably around 50 bucks and this is a delicious, creamy, milky, powdery vanilla with the slightest touch of some florals in the background. Now, if you're one of those people that has difficult time with milky notes or lactonic notes because they can go sour on you, this is one you wanna be a little bit careful with. Fortunately for me, it doesn't do that on me. It stays sweet and lactonic and creamy and a little bit powdery. And it has a wonderful, you know, vanilla quality to it. So it does not go sour on me. It's light wearing, so I like to wear it on its own, or it is one of the best layering vanillas I own. And I'm gonna show you a layering combo that I usually use in just a minute. The next one, I talk about this perfume all the time. I just spoke about it in the video I did last weekend, the Smell Supernatural video. For all of you new here though, I will quickly go over it. It is Blanche Bet, and I will link some of those videos where I talk about it in more detail. Below. This is a, just a fantastic milky white flower, creamy, coconutty perfume with a little bit of incense, a little bit of cacao, and a lot of gorgeous musk. This perfume is one of my most frequently worn fragrances in the month of October, and I've never done an end of the month roundup. You know what? I think I'll start doing that. How about I start doing that? So you actually know what I wore the most each month. And some of the ones I wear don't make it into videos because they just don't fit a particular theme. So if you want me to start doing that, let me know in the comments below. So one of the prettiest, milky, creamy, floral, incense-y, musky, coconutty perfumes I own is delicious and very, very unique. The next one, I have just the perfume oil because I believe this perfume is discontinued. I've seen it on eBay or, you know, secondhand sites for something astronomical. It had this cult following. It is called Cry Baby by Melanie Martinez. So Melanie Martinez is a singer songwriter and she was on some show. I want to say it's called The Voice. 2012 that's the that's the date that's sticking in my mind and she was signed to a record label and then i don't know why maybe she liked perfumes but she developed her own perfume in 2016 and it was called cry baby by melanie martinez i'll show a picture of the bottle which was literally a bottle it was supposed to be very nostalgic for her and so the notes were 
milk and strawberry and some forest fruits and maybe some caramel. And this oil perfumery was a great way for me to, was a great way for me to be able to smell the perfume without paying a million bucks for a fragrance secondhand. And I never do that, particularly if I've never smelled the perfume before. You're just, I would never know if I got a fake. So I, that's one of the many, many reasons I love getting oil perfumery. And they are great to layer under fragrances to prolong something or bring out notes that you want to bring out more. So I do get a fruitiness. So this is fruit. It's, it's sweet, slightly tart fruit. And I do get the forest fruit aspect. So to me, it's got a little bit of a greenness, but it's like a dark green. It's almost like you took leaves and covered them with sugar. So it's still sweet. It's not bitter. It's not headache inducing. It is not soapy. This is really a sweet gourmand fragrance. It has some powderiness to it in the dry down, but it's still milky and fruity. It's mostly fruity, but if you've been dying, if you've been one of those people that have been dying to get your hands on the original perfume and you didn't want to spend a million bucks, go with the oil perfumery version. So I only have two left and I've never shown this one particular perfume on a YouTube video, but I have shown it over on Instagram and this is called Let Doro. And I got this because I'm always looking for the perfect sweet rice pudding perfume and this almost made it there. If it wasn't for one note that's in here, this would be the perfect sweet rice pudding perfume. I absolutely love the dry down in this. It's like you had a rice pudding and you put a little bit of chai latte in it. Now this has a note of turmeric and I don't particularly love it in here because it goes a little bit towards the cumin aspect of a spice. I personally put turmeric on lots of my food because it has a lot of antioxidant and health benefits, but I just would prefer it without. So it is a little bit off-putting. Some people will love it. Some people will say it smells like delicious chai. It smells like chai tea. It smells like chai tea leaves without any sweetness before it's made into a tea and before you add milk and others are going to find that this turmeric smells a little bit towards light cumin. And it doesn't take that long, at least by like 45 minutes to an hour, it burns off and then it becomes this delicious, milky, sweet rice pudding perfume that I have been looking for. The performance on this one is eternal and it has a really nice, warm, woody base. Like when I first tested this, I sprayed it on a blotter and you know, I was smelling it and I put the blotter down and went about my day and I came back downstairs the next day. I could smell the blotter coming down the stairs. It was just so unbelievable. So it has terrific performance on skin, clothes, and on paper. So a delicious perfume because of that turmeric note, I would say, well, I always say try first, but this is not cheap. If you're like me and always looking for the best rice pudding fragrance, give it a try and you may be able to work through that turmeric opening if you can. It's just, it's delicious. Oh, and I do layer this with a lotion and I left it upstairs. It's from Fresh Time and it's called Autumn Spice. It's perfect. It's got a nice, it's got some nice sweet cinnamon spices. So it's almost like a cinnamon frosting. So you add that with this and it's perfect. And I also add fresh cream to this one and it really kind of it tamps down on that turmeric opening. It's delicious. And the last one, you know, when we think of milky and creamy, particularly with woods, we're thinking of sandalwood. To keep this video in a reasonable amount of time, I'm not going to really add any sandalwood dominant perfumes except this one. And the one I have is a, it's like a tester or a travel spray. It is Piano Santel. It is the milkiest sandalwood by far, but there's something nice and this is another chewy fragrance. This has some nice aromatics or spices. I almost get like a caraway seed or a carrot seed. So it's woody, it's very creamy, it's very milky, and it has this nice dry spiciness to it. So I actually love the combination. It's not sweet at all definitely makes it unisex, but I adore this. So I'm probably going to be getting a full bottle, but my rule is for the most part, I have to use the travel first. So a delicious 
non-sweet, super creamy, milky sandalwood with some lovely dry and slightly savory spices. So that's it. That's my first video on milky, creamy, dreamy fragrances. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I hope you had fun with me this afternoon. Thanks again for sticking around. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting me. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.